Welcome to Mobile Medical Media's video review of the suprapatellar approach to ultrasound guided knee injections. This module reviews the suprapatellar approach for injecting the knee using ultrasound guidance. A 44 year old woman with inflammatory arthritis of the right knee presents to your office with persistent pain despite a long course of medical therapy. You decide to treat her chronic pain with an ultrasound-guided intra-articular steroid injection. Knee injections are common office procedures performed by orthopedic surgeons, family practitioners, and rheumatologists. Typically, this therapy is used to treat symptoms associated with osteoarthritis and other causes of knee pain. The suprapatellar bursa lies beneath the distal quadriceps tendon and communicates directly with the knee joint in most individuals. Therefore, fluid identified in the suprapatellar bursa indicates the presence of fluid in the joint itself. Ultrasound enables direct visualization of fluid collections in the suprapatellar bursa and knee joint and determination of the appropriate location and depth of needle insertion. The patient should be in a supine position with the affected knee slightly flexed. A high frequency linear transducer is optimal for this application due to its high spatial resolution and short focal length. Place the transducer in a longitudinal position anteriorly just cephalid to the patella with the directional indicator pointing towards the patient's head. The cortex of the patella can be seen on the right of the ultrasound screen as an echogenic line that casts a shadow into the far field. The anterior cortex of the femur may be seen as an echogenic line deep to the patella. On the left side of the ultrasound screen, the moderately echogenic quadriceps tendon can be identified. Suprapatellar bursitis can be identified as a hypoechoic fluid collection lying deep to the quadriceps tendon. Next, place the probe transversely, just superior to the patella with the directional indicator to the patient's right. The quadriceps tendon is seen in the near field and the suprapatellar bursa lies beneath it. The femur can be visualized in the far field as a curved echogenic line casting a shadow. If an effusion is present, it can be visualized deep to the quadriceps tendon as an anechoic signal. Injection of the knee may be performed via several approaches. In the suprapatellar approach, the needle is inserted just posterior to the superior edge of the patella. The procedure is often performed with a sterile probe sheath and drape. Alternatively, some experts have developed a method using tape as a barrier between the injection site and the ultrasound probe and non-sterile gel. In the example seen here, the effusion has been visualized and an injection site chosen and marked with an indentation in the skin. A strip of non-sterile tape is folded and applied, forming a barrier between the injection site and the ultrasound probe. The injection site is then sterilized in the usual fashion. This procedure can be performed under real-time ultrasound guidance. With the ultrasound probe in the transverse plane, the needle is inserted along the axis of the probe. This should result in the visualization of the needle as a hyperechoic line, which is often accompanied by a typical ring-down artifact. Diffusion of a steroid suspension can be visualized and has a characteristic appearance of hyperechoic foci due to its crystalline structure. You perform an ultrasound-guided injection of a steroid suspension into your patient's knee. You are able to identify the effusion in the suprapatellar bursa and determine the optimal depth of needle insertion for the procedure. In real time, the needle is visualized as it enters the bursa and the steroid suspension is seen as it flows in. Be sure that your patient remains still after you have marked an insertion point. Keep in mind that while diffusion of local anesthetic solution appears black on the ultrasound screen, steroid suspensions will appear anechoic with hyperechoic foci due to their crystalline structure.